Good morning, everyone. Um, we will be um, getting started here on our webinar this morning on how to manage weeds and pests with non-toxic solutions. Um, Jenny Call will be presenting with us um, for Garden Sphere this morning. And Jenny's had a lot of experience dealing with gardens and weeds and pests, et cetera. You'll find out more when, we, when she gets to introduce herself. Um, I'm Janda. I'm the coordinator of the Enviro House, which is the facility in the picture behind me. Um, we will be finally reopening. I had thought we would do that in June, but a lot of cleaning up and stuff to do since we've been closed for two and a half years. So we will be reopening officially July 7. Um, we will be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 to 5 continuing to do webinars and um, hopefully some workshops on site, kind of waiting to see how that's gonna work out. Um, so um, I'll put the information on how to find us um, in the chat and you can uh, check more there. If you, um, I'm guessing by now, just about everybody's had experience with Zoom, but if by chance you have not, there's a menu bar at the bottom. Um, you can do Q&A, but I encourage you not to do that, to do chat instead, mm -hmm. because if you do the chat, then it's recorded and um, visible. You can, you can see the questions, you can see the answers, and you can copy that information to a notepad or a, uh, just a doc, something, um, so you'll have it. And then um, if you have questions in the chat, if you put uh, your questions to everyone instead of mm -hmm. just to the panelists. Um, then you can see um, uh, you can see who's they're anonymous, so your chat will come out. It won't necessarily have your name, but you can do that, and then everybody can see the question and the answer. Um, so I don't think we've got a whole lot of resources to put in this morning. Um, they weren't included in last year's, and I didn't get around to pulling those up until. I realized they weren't included. So I will try to find some of those while Jenny's talking and add them. And if if you have other questions, please um, get in touch with one of us, go check Garden Sphere or get in touch with me and um, we'll get more information to you. So with that quick intro, I will introduce Jenny and um, let her talk about herself. And then we will pop in and out as needed. When I, if there are questions in the chat, Jenny's really good about following that, but if it's pertinent and, and I think it needs to be mentioned, um, I may pop up and bring that up too. So um, thank you again for being here. Um, we will catch everybody up. If you're coming in a little late, um, we'll catch everybody up later in the webinar. So Jenny, um, feel free to carry on about you. All right. Yes. So I am Jenny Call, and I grew up in Pierce County here um, in Fife when it was all farms and uh, running through corn and cabbage and whatnot. Um, and uh, I have a degree in sustainable agriculture, and I am also a public school teacher. Uh, I really enjoy this type of work, um, and I, I feel like it connects in so many different ways in in our lives, you know, because we all eat and we all do those things. So we're connected somehow to um, the agriculture and horticulture and the environment around us. So um, if you do have any questions, all questions are good questions. Um, if you have any tips that you want to share, um, put those in the chat. Um, again, go ahead and change it so that it says everyone. Um, so it's not just uh, um, filtering to Janda and I and, um, you know, I really truly uh and every question is a good question um i really welcome community um involvement in in these webinars um and i've, I've been doing the webinars for quite some time and when the <laughs> Envira house was open um uh, i was there all the time so um it really truly ask any question you want um we're going to be talking about pests and weeds and and all those things that kind of make our hair pull out um uh during during this type of time of year and you know we just had to kind of mitigate it and um i like to say um think do things smarter rather than harder <laughs> so if it, it takes less time to do it then um you're more likely to do it so before you get started i wanted to mention i'm going to put this in the chat but please do note that it's gardensphere.biz biz mm -hmm. um not a lot of people use that extension and so you might get redirected if it's .com, but um, just take note that that's what their uh, website mm -hmm. is. Yes, 
yeah. And, um, and I, I've been with Gardens here for over 10 years and I love Travis and Gabe. They're like family. Um, and um, it's just, it's a fun place to kind of come up with great ideas and uh, ask questions. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you so and get started. All right, I got all kinds of fun stuff up here. <laughs> all right, so let's do our slideshow. There we go. And I'm gonna do that. And oh, so I'm gonna see, I want my, there it is. I, want, I always have the chat pulled up. Um, I, I will be checking the chat periodically and um, I do encourage um, participation um, in, in that process. Um, so it's weeds, pests, and non-toxic solutions. Um, there is the address for, for Garden Sphere. It's in the Proctor district, but it's on the other side of, of Proctor, um, uh, the more, um, more north side of Proctor there. Um, and it, it, it is open right now. So. <laughs> All right, so here's the first question. Um, have Jan to pull that up. I'm muted. I said, keep talking while I get back to oh. <laughs> give it up. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and get that quiz up there. So try to think about your yard and like, what do you see in your yard? What do you see that might need work? Um, what, what's what's going to give you the most trouble in your yard? Um, so if you've got pest weeds, your lawn, your lawn is like, you're like, my lawn is crazy. Um, your garden, any other areas in your yard that are giving you some trouble? Um, and if you have, if you uh, put in other, just go ahead and um, type that into the chat. That's super helpful. Okay. So what is what did I put in there that was garden, Jenny? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. The, the question is, what is the most trouble in your yard? So pests, weeds, your lawn, the garden, and then any other. So oh, okay. Well, I wasn't sure what garden meant. Okay. Yep. Maybe somebody's lawn looks really great, but their garden is giving them trouble. Okay. So. All right. Well, we have. Um, and, and that poll here. There we go. All right. So it's pretty spread out. Okay. So the weeds and, and lawn are, are top. Pests, not too bad. Um, buttercup, crabgrass, clover. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if, I, if others can see that or not. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing that. There we go, and closing it out. So um, we will touch on all of those things for sure. Um, some common weeds that we have, we'll start with weeds first. Um, and some common weeds are uh, purple dead nettle, um, what we call stinky bob, um, is it, herb robert, um, dandelion, bindweed. Um, bindweed also goes by um, morning glory, um, an invasive morning glory. There is the decorative morning glory, um, but it's the, a bindweed. Um, chickweed, horsetail, horsetail in, a, a, in areas that are uh, lowland areas, um, not as much up on hills, but those uh, lower valley areas. Um, shotweed, shotweed is everywhere and I know it drives folks just batty. Um, catchweed, uh, the Himalayan blackberry, uh, and the poor gentleman who brought that over, uh, he regrets actually <laughs> establishing the Himalayan blackberry. Now we do have a native blackberry that is, is not invasive, um, but the Himalayan blackberry has become very invasive. We've got plantain, um, lamb's quarters, the lady's thumb, dock, um, thistle, quackgrass, and crabgrass. Now I do have some pictures. Now some of these, um, are, are a lot, quite a few of these are edible. Um, so maybe they're not a weed to you. And I always like to preface weeds with, they are a plant that you don't wish to be there, right? It's, it's maybe not in a spot that you, um, you, you would like it to be. Um, uh, but like for me, I, I like the purple dead nettle. Um, I harvest it, I dry it, I use it in teas. Um, and uh, the um, chickweed, my, my ducks love. Um, 
and uh, the um, the plantain, I actually eat those leaves as well. So there's a few things here that you can eat, do a little bit of research on, um, and that are edible. Um, shot weed before it does get that stock is edible. It tastes actually um, um, very much uh, like uh, like a a mix between a sorrel and a spinach. Um, dock, the root is edible. Um, dandelions, dandelions are indicative of a, a nutrient deficiency in the soil and um, so we'll talk about that as well. But a lot of these common weeds are actually edible as well. So um, just kind of depends if you want it there or not, right? Um, so we've got that purple dead nettle right here. There's a stinky bob, stinky bob. <laughs> It's just so much fun to say. Um, and our dandelions. Now, dandelions are really interesting uh, because before they get their stem and their flower, uh, the, the leaves are quite um, quite good in salads. Um, the flowers can be used and dried um, to use in teas. Here's our bindweed. Now, bindweed, I, you know, I have, I, I, I take no mercy on the bindweed when trying to get rid of it. I, I am got quite a bit in my yard. Um, here is chickweed. Okay, here's the catchweed, or I like they have these little burrs, or like little vac, uh, velcro burrs um, on there. And oh, geez, you know, I <laughs> my cats that are outside get those on all the time. Um, and here is that. Here is our shotweed with its little flower here. Now, if you're not familiar with shotweed, um, they they look really pretty when they're leafing out, totally edible, really actually quite delicious, um, but they get these stems and then they get the flowers. And if you brush against them, the reason they're called shotweed, those seeds go poof and they shoot out and they spread. That's how that spreads. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty, <laughs> pretty invasive little weed. Um, here's our plantain. Um, plantain can be uh, eaten. Um, it's quite tasty. Um, but you know, if you don't want it there, then it is definitely weed for you. Here's some lamb's quarter. Um, here is dock right here. Um, there we go. Some lady slipper. Lady slipper is also quite invasive. There's hundreds of little seeds in there. Um, and we have our thistle. Now uh, in my in my yard, I have uh, tons and tons of shotweed that I try to get out before it starts shooting those seeds, but I always miss one or two. Um, I've got a lot of lady slipper. Uh, lady slipper is very difficult to get rid of. Um, the seeds can go dormant for a very, very, very long time. Um, if I go back one, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and go back one here. Um, and uh, this uh, catchweed, uh, which has the little burrs, is also very difficult to get rid of because um, they catch on everything, right? They've got that Velcro, and so they they will um, they'll just get latch right on there. Um, and so I was talking about some nutrient deficiencies. Oops. Um, and so with nutrient deficiencies, um, you need a good combo of your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. Now, um, if you maintain uh, a balance in those nutrients, um, some of these weeds won't show up. Um, um, like with the dandelion, there are some benefits to having a dandelion in your yard. Um, the root system actually will break up hard clay, hard pan clay quite well. Um, and then you can, you know, fork it out, but you have to make sure you get the whole root out of there. Um, but it is um, indicating a, a, a deficiency. So um, having um, a good balance is really, really important. Uh, the weed in the upper right. Um, do you mean on the first slide here? I will go back for you. Um, let's see. Um, the upper right. Um, here's a uh, upper right here. This is lamb's quarter. It's got a very soft foliage um, on the underbelly kind of of those leaves. It's got a little bit of silvery color um, on this one. Of course, the upper right is dandelion, um, but that's lamb's quarter there. Yeah. Um, and lamb's quarter, uh, some folks eat the lamb's quarter leaves. So, um, you know, again, a weed is a weed if you don't want it there. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question about what that was. Um, get the lamb's quarter up there. Um, yeah, I don't have listed um, some of those grasses and the buttercup, but yes, uh, you know, uh, buttercup is super invasive um, because what it does is it, it, it's kind of like a strawberry plant, right? So it'll, it'll put a leader out and that leader will root, put a leader out, leader will root, put a leader out, leader will root. Now the seeds from buttercup also can last in the soil, just totally dormant for up to 40 years. So um, you might be cultivating a space and then all of a sudden you have these little tiny ba uh, baby buttercup, right? Well, it's those seeds have been dormant. And so um, a lot of these, invasive plants that are, they just, they do really great. <laughs> Their seeds can stay dormant for quite some time. Um, and so that's why you, you might have to, it might take several years for you to get that 
plant out of the space that you don't want it in. Um, it's very frustrating. So, <laughs> which I completely understand. Um, so again, we're talking about uh, the um, chemical makeup, uh, the nutrients inside of your soil. Um, now, some of these weeds do crop up, like I said, the dandelion, um, uh, if your soil is deficient in, in um, nitrogen, and potassium. Um, some of these things will, will crop up easier. Um, and some of the benefits, so the benefit of dock is that it does have a very uh, strong taproot, just like a dandelion. And so it does effectively break up that hard pan clay. Um, but again, if you don't want it there, then, you know, it's got to go, right? Um, some things can, that can help your area um, is putting in compost, um, you know, testing your soil for um, a nutrient balance, right? Getting those uh, chemical balances right. Um, testing your soil before you put down your fertilizer. Um, maybe you find out that it's really, really low in potassium, right? So you just, you gotta figure out what the imbalance is happening there for the area that you're using. Um, and so compost, adding compost can really help that hard pan clay. It helps break down um, that soil. And some of these plants don't like it, right? They don't like it. They, they're like, oh, I'm not doing any work. Or this is, this is, this, this has potassium in it. I, oh, I don't want potassium. And so the, the weeds will, will go. And so compost can really add, add, add a lot of benefits to a space. Um, again, fertilizer, um, you're going to want to get a, a slow release fertilizer. So a granular rather than a liquid, um, because, you know, sometimes we have these years, like we have had this year that it's, you know, it's raining quite heavily. And um, if you get a liquid fertilizer, that fertilizer is just going to basically wash right into the into the water system. So you wanna get a slow release, um, water soluble, um, granular, or, or you know, hopefully you're getting an organic or OMRI certified um, fertilizer to add to your space to kind of get that balance. Um, and then the uh, red wigglers. Now red wigglers are a communal type of worm. And so they, uh, they will, um, stick together and they, they, you know, just like our regular earthworms, um, different sizes, obviously, um, they will help aerate a space, you know, and they, um, the worm castings that they leave are super beneficial. It's a great compost. If you can start a little worm bin, um, you can keep adding that. It can balance that soil out. Um, aeration is really important, um, to, to discouraging, um, these, uh, invasive weeds, uh, to taking root. So, you know, if you can do that, that this, these are some ways you can, you know, just over time really support your, um, your outdoor space, you know, um, I check the chat really quick. Oh, we're good. Okay. Um, so we do have some weed killers now. Um, the, the weed, um, weed beater and the, uh, weed killer are, are safe to use. And I put safe, um, I want to say safe in quotation marks, um, uh, because it is really detrimental to our ground, um, ground pollinators. Most of our native bumblebees and things like that, um, they all nest underground. So these, um, you know, that it really isn't safe for them, but um, if you have pets and things like that, the birds, uh, they're not going to get ill from um, becoming in contact with these. Um, and these are for more broad leaf, broad leaf, meaning um, more of your plantain and your dandelion, um, some more broad leaf weeds, dock, things like that. Um, and they're lower impact on um, our, our environment. But again, if you do have uh, the pollinators in there, um, it will um, it, it will kill them. Um, some other herbicides um, that will kill the plants, um, you can use that are that won't have an effect on our, our burrowing pollinators um, using a propane torch. Um, you do have to be careful of then you are paying attention to where you are throwing that torch. <laughs> I've had some mishaps myself and <laughs> have, have torched things that probably shouldn't be torched. <laughs> Um, so, but what it does is if you have an area, say you have your vegetable garden, right? And your pathways, um, are cropping up with little, little baby weeds, right? Um, it's a great way to just do, um, a heat, a heat and kill. Um, and it will, it will, 
um, stop them from growing and it'll it'll kill them kill them off. Um, with larger weeds, I probably wouldn't go for weeds that are more than I would say maybe six to inches tall with a propane torch. Um, but you do want to hit all of the the green matter. Um, and it really does. It's not necessarily that you're sitting there and you're burning it and you're lighting it on fire, but you're you're creating that heat. And what that heat does is it breaks apart um, the cell cell walls and it will it will gradually kill off the um, the green matter. Um, again, it's not going to kill off that root system, but without the leaves, they cannot get um, they not can't use that photosynthesis to get nutrients to the root system. So hopefully over time um, it will kill off that root system. Um, a vinegar mix, um, it does cause soil death. Um, so anything that um, does come in contact with that vinegar, um, any biological mycelia, any of that will also um, be um, kind of killed off um, in that space uh, for some time. Um, not a long time, I think, give it a year, you know, and uh, it will, or, or even six months, it'll, it'll wash out. Um, but it does, it is super effective um, when treated, you know, up to two times in a space. And, um, you know, you can get those larger sprayers and put your, your little mixture of vinegar in there and, and, um, and lime and just spray it on. Um, again, be careful where you're spraying. You, uh, you don't want to hit things that um, are, that you're, you're wanting to keep in that space. Um, burnout, um, clove, uh, clove oil and um, citric acid is also a very good topical burn. Uh, burn. Um, again, uh, with the liquids though, you do have to be mindful that um, anything that comes in contact is, that's going to leach into your soil. Um, a lot of times what's going to happen is that you're going to end up killing off things that are also in the soil. So, so you just kind of be mindful about where you're spraying. Really make it a strategic spray, not an overall, I'm going to spray everywhere type thing. Um, and um, they're not gonna kill the root systems per se, and, um, but they will get that greenery down. Photosynthesis can occur. And so the root system gets starved out due to enough times and eventually it will, it will disappear because that root system has no longer, um, doesn't have that food transfer anymore. So um, it does become quite effective. Let's see. All right, just checking that chat. All right, here is our second poll question. Okay, do you feel confident dealing with your weeds? Um, do you think you can, you're like, okay, I could, I could do this. <laughs> knowing, knowing that a weed is something that you don't want there, you know, you just got to pinpoint, you know, do I feel, I feel pretty good about this. No, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on the fence, you know, I'm going to give it a go, a sort of, I'm going to give it a go and see how it works out. Or no, I still think, uh, I don't know, I need more help with this or um, questions. Now, again, questions are very welcome. Um, go ahead and pop those in. Um, now, I know uh, it was mentioned about crab grass. It's actually a quack grass. Um, it, there is a difference. Um, the two are dealt with a little bit differently and they grow slightly different. Um, and so, um, there are several grasses that they grow from underground and nodules and they root off um, and they will keep expanding that root system, um, really just digging out that root system the best you can and then pulling it out as they come out is going to be the best bet on that one. I, I didn't address that earlier. Did, did you see the results? Because I ended the poll. I am. Yep. Okay. I can, I can see it all. Okay. So that's Boy, yeah, if there's can... anybody phoning in, that's roughly 50% who said yes, that they feel confident and okay. almost 40% sort of, and a couple that um, have more questions. So I'm yeah. going to stop and sharing. Again, yeah, and I encourage you, if, you know, if you've got more questions, go for it. because It's a good thing. Okay. Right, so we're going to go ahead and close that out. All right. Um, so we're going to talk about Clover a little bit. Now, oh, let's stop that. <laughs> Um, sometimes the poll, poll has a mind of its own sometimes. Um, oh, we're going to talk about clover a little bit. Now, I know that clover has come up as a weed that someone, or remember, weeds are things that we don't want them in a space. However, um, I really can't talk more highly of clover. Um, clover is 
a super beneficial nitrogen fixing plant. Um, it is wonderful for our native pollinators. Um, it stays low. Now I'm talking about the white clover. White clover doesn't get much more than maybe eight, eight to 12 inches tall. And um, I really encourage people to take out the grass in their lawns or take out a good chunk of it and put the clover in there uh, because the clover is water uh, water drought resistant, it will stay green through our hardest droughts. Um, it brings in pollinators. You only have to mow it a couple of times in the summer. It really, really is more low maintenance than our grass. Um, and if it is in your garden, till it in. It becomes a vegetative compost. It becomes a, 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 a rich, nutrient center for your garden. So I cannot talk more highly of clover. Um, if you uh, plant, say, say you've got red clover, a crimson clover, which they do do get quite full, quite tall. Um, they can get up to two feet tall. Again, you can till that right in, put that right into your soil um, and let it decompose in your soil because it has so much nitrogen in there. It is, it is just fixing that stuff in there and you're putting that right back into your soil, which is really beneficial. Um, the purple clover, again, um, just till it right in. Um, you don't necessarily have to pull them out. Um, I would just till them into your soil to get that nutrient rich plant into your soil as a green manure or green, uh, a green food for your, um, for your space. Um, and, and again, the white clover, I know a lot of folks, um, again, if you don't want it in your lawn, um, uh, you know, you're going to have to probably do some, so do some broad, um, uh, weed beater uh, does work well for that, um, and the Whitney's uh, weed killer does work well. Um, however, I, I do have to um, I do have to plug that the, the white clover clover will stay green. Your lawn without a lot of lot of water and a lot of lot of tending um, will need a lot of care. Um, whereas the white clover needs very little care, and it is making your space very rich with nutrients. Um, that is my plug on clover. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it really is a beneficial um, in most spaces. I've got some common pests. Now, I love these pictures because they are so close up. <laughs> so we've got some aphids here. Okay. Um, here's a moment. Hey, before you get into the uh, pests, um, there's a comment in the chat you might want to address about yes. instead of herbicides. Yeah, I was going to check the chat after I went over this, so I will I will come back to that. Okay, so we've got aphids, we've got our green aphids. No, they come in all different colors. They're, they're even brown aphids. Okay, so aphids um, are they're they're basically sucking the nutrients out of the plant, and so it damages those plants. Um, we have a thrip right here, and we have root weevils. Now we're going to go over mollusks. Um, now, if you are getting rid of plant matter. Um, the aphids are only going to eat off of the tender leaves, okay? So tender new growth. And that's why, say, on your roses, um, on a lot of the new growth, the tender leaves, you'll find aphids. Or on the new stock, you'll find aphids. Um, and so that really does go into that question, um, an herbicide vinegar. Now, some of these things will actually cross over, okay? So um, instead of using a harsh um, uh, vinegar, um, you could also use a soapy, use a, um, a, you know, a soapy water, okay? And it will, A, brown leaves, but it will also take care of aphids, okay? Um, so you could, um, you could double dip into that. Right. Um, and I know I, I saw the comment about hand pulling. Sometimes that's just not feasible if someone has a yard that is, um, say, an acre or a third of an acre. Um, but it could be feasible or maybe they have um, arthritis or there's a there's something that keeps them from doing the hand pulling. Um, but um, uh, like for me, I have damage to my right hand. And so um, I use a combination of tools and hand pulling and I use a lot of different things to to mitigate that. So um, you can hand pull weeds. Um, 
totally. Um, but you, if you do do that, you need to get the whole root system um, because if you don't get the whole root system, it will just come right back um, if you're going to all that effort. Um, and so um, again, and with all the liquids, right, you do have to be mindful of the pollinators that are in the ground, right? So um, there's, there, there's give and take, there's pros and cons of each and every one of these things, right? Um, so kind of have to go with what is going to be easiest for someone and most accessible, right? Because if it's not accessible, um, you're less likely to do it. Um, so here is our third poll question. But you're right, you can do hand pulling. Um, I do a lot of that in my vegetable garden. So, so what's your biggest pest? Insects, mollusks, the mollusks using snails and slugs, um, funguses. Okay, any other pests? And really other can be anything um, other than insects, mollusks, and fungus. Um, so if you have any other, go ahead and pop those into the chat. Um, let us know what that other pest is. Yeah, what is that other? Oh, uh, what's that other? We got two people saying other. What might that other be? Let's see. What is that other? Gall on soup. Um, so We've had about two thirds that have answered. Um, I'll give it about two more seconds and then I'm going to end it, assuming nobody else wants to add anything. Mm. Oh, okay. There we go. All right, we're going to end that poll. All right, so three people said other. I'm curious of what the other is. Um, I'm going to go pop into that chat. Um, gall on azaleas. Um, stink bugs. I guess I could say insects or bugs. Um, insects do have six legs. Um, I'm not seeing any other. So no mammals. All right. Sounds good. All right, let's move on. All right. So if we do have um, some pest prevention, again, like I mentioned, you could do um, a mixture of water and soap. Um, uh, but the key there is not to use the antibacterial soap, right? Um, and they're great getting the aphids and mites. Um, they really are effective on aphids and mites. Um, you can use neem, spinosad, Bt, that wacky poll. Um, oh, you stopped that poll. You just stopped that. Okay. <laughs> Again, it has a mite of its own. Um, DE, diatomaceous earth. Um, I really use diatomaceous earth on, on the base of a plant and up the bark. So I do use it a lot of my fruit trees um, and around raspberries, all my berries. I use DE a lot on the diatomaceous earth. Um, and it's quite cheap. Um, you can get a 50 pound bag for about 20 bucks at a feed store. It's quite cheap. Um, and uh, the pyrethrin. So um, you can, there's a lot of really safe treatments. I'm going to go ahead and uh, next couple of slides, I'll show you some of them. Um, and so if you are having some issues with any of these insects, you can do that. Um, beneficial insects are pretty cool, um, but with the beneficial insects, you really do need to have a lot of food available for them. <laughs> so um, if you're being proactive and um, bringing them in, say you're like, oh, I know I'm gonna have aphids. So I'm gonna bring in some ladybugs. Those ladybugs are not sticking around to lay some eggs. And what you really want is the larva. You want those, you want the little black and orange dragons eating those aphids because they will eat the most. Um, they eat way more than the actual uh, mature ladybug. Um, but if you don't have any food, they're not gonna stick around. And it makes it so sad because you're like, wait a minute, I just spent 15 bucks on ladybugs and they're all gone. <laughs> and it's such a bummer. Um, and so really make sure um, that you, uh, you have food for them. And a lot of these beneficial insects will come into your yard if you've um, kind of established areas for them to, to nest and things like that. So um, the praying mantids um, a lot of times do not do quite well <laughs> in our environment and they get eaten pretty quickly. Um, they are pretty cool and they do eat um, eat our little, little friends there, but 
uh, they they do get eaten really quickly around here. It's just not quite the right environment um, for the mantids. Um, lace wings are super cool though. Lace wings will do a lot. Um, uh, one of the benef beneficial in uh, insects that I did not mention um, is um, we've got a, um, a, a wasp that lays in aphids themselves, <laughs> a parasitic wasp, and they create aphid mummies, little aphid zombies. And so um, they be, the aphids become the host for the eggs. The um, parasitic wasp actually lays their eggs in the aphid. Um, and it's, it's wild. I just love nature. Uh, it's totally wild and, and very cool. Um, and I know I did not list that, but that is, that is one that's just, it's, it's around here. It's just hanging out. It's, it's in our natural environment, um, which is so cool. Um, there are, oh, slugs. Yeah, mollusks. Yeah, the mollusks. Um, raccoons. Okay, so you've got some raccoon issue. All right. Um, there is an invasive um, beetle. Yep. Um, yellow jackets. So a lot of the wasp yellow jackets, um, they are only a pest if they are um, you know, obviously just like with weeds, um, all of these are things that um, if they are bugging you, if they are like causing you stress, then it's a pest, right? Um, I, you know, sometimes I have a lot of aphids and then I'll plant a trap crop, right? So aphids love nasturtium. And so sometimes I'll plant nasturtiums in another spot and all the aphids will go eat my nasturtium and they'll leave my broccoli alone or they'll leave my roses alone, right? Um, I plant, um, I do a lot of companion planting. So the aphids don't appreciate oregano. I've got oregano next to my roses um, and I don't really have a huge issue with aphids with that. So that is another way to do some pest prevention is doing some um, companion planting, um, even with your perennials, right? Um, and there are, there is an invasive beetle. We've got a couple of those. Um, and the Department of Agriculture has been posting actually um, uh, about some invasive beetles. So, um, and they, they have very specific pictures. Um, so we have some neem, neem oil, um, and then some dead bug. Um, Jack, Captain Jack's dag bug is, is, is really effective. Um, if you have, um, if you have all of the things, <laughs> say you have, you have insects, you have fungus, you have milk, you know, mites, you have all, you have all of the things, right? Um, triple action plus is going to be your best bet. Um, and what I would do is that I would get the concentrated version, right? So you get this concentrated, which is going to run you about 30 bucks, get the ready to use when you finish the ready to use bot, everything in the ready to use bottle, it has uh, the ratio in the um, concentrate and keep using that ready to use bottle by mixing your own using the concentrate. Um, it'll, it'll be way, way less expensive. Um, and so th that's, that's what I do is I, I will get the, the concentrate and I'll mix my own in a bottle that is already labeled, right? Because when you're dealing with any kind of liquid, um, you really need to make sure that you label them. Absolutely. Um, make sure you label them, um, because you don't want any accidents, right? Someone sprays, dead bug on something or vinegar on something that you're like, oh no, that's not it. You know, so um, be really careful. Um, so we've got some beneficial insects here. We've got a praying mantis. I love them. They're, they're probably one of my favorite insects. Um, they just don't last long here. Here's a lace wing. I think they're gorgeous. I mean, it, it just looks like, um, like tatting, you know, um, I don't know if you uh, know what that is. Uh, it's one of the fiber arts. And so, it, you know, it looks like a tatting or it looks like some really intricate crochet. They're gorgeous. And there's our friend, our ladybug. It's like, hey, I'm gonna eat all your aphids. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the cartoon where um, the little girl's like, oh, I love it. I love ladybugs. They're so beautiful and friendly. And then like in the next frame is like the ladybug eating the aphids, you know, and it's, it's pretty funny. So they, they're, they're, they're pretty cute. Um, 
Now, uh, we will talk about raccoons for sure. And let's talk about those mollusks. So here we've got their mollusks. We've got our snails and our slugs. Um, beer traps are super, super easy. Um, I, like, I like to think of them as giving the slugs and snails a good time before they pass on. Um, <laughs> before they meet their demise. They're feeling good before they meet their demise. Um, um, Sluggo works great. It's um, a carbohydrate base. Um, it is OMRI certified. So um, it is a little brutal. They eat it and their insides kind of expand. Um, it's like when you would, if you'd give um, birds uncooked rice, right? So it'll, it'll expand and um, damage their internal um, body parts. And um, then they, they go to their demise. Um, diatomaceous earth works great. Um, you can use salt, but then of course, then the salt goes into the soil and it's a whole thing. Um, you can use um, a copper ribbon around. Um, they don't like going over those, um, the copper, copper ribbon. Um, you can use iron phosphate solutions. Um, I, I, I have learned to just kind of live with them. Um, uh, there's quite a few native mollusks, um, that are actually, um, they're having a hard time, um, because we're using so many, um, chemicals to kill them out of our spaces, um, and they're decomposers. So I, I just kind of, I just let it lie. <laughs> I've learned to kind of just live with them. They're not, you know, if it's, if it's wet out, if you've got a nice wet space, um, they're going to lay their eggs and do their business. But once it gets really dry and hot, they're kind of going for those wet spaces, you know, those wet, cool spaces. So, um, you know, you could always start a little, a little leaf pile or something, uh, keeping it wet or, you know, a little compost pile where they can go do their decomposition in action. Right. Um, and they'll stay away from the dry spaces. Um, this is also where I encourage only watering the space that you need to water. Um, don't do a broad spectrum watering and, um, try not to water leaves of things. Um, because what that does is it encourage there's water there and the water is cool and the mullocks love cool, wet places. So what you're doing is you're creating these really great wet spaces that stay nice and cool in the summertime. And they're like, yes, that's where we're going to eat. <laughs> so um, I do encourage, you know, only watering the space that you want to water, keep it low and slow. I, I tell everyone is you water low and slow. Um, if you have a watering system, even better. If it's a sprinkler system, you're just going to have them. I mean, it's, it's going to happen because the water is going everywhere. Um, but if you have, you know, more of a, of a line watering system or a drip irrigation system, um, that it, that'll be more effective of keeping the mollusks off of your space. Okay. They really don't like dry space. They will, they hate it. Um, so keeping it, keeping spaces, you don't want them in as dry as possible. It's always good. So water in the morning, that evaporation will happen. You'll get less, less mollusks. I'm going to check that chat really quick. Um, yeah, we hadn't talked about stink bugs. Yeah, they're, you know, uh, stink bugs. Yeah, it's a hard body, hard body little guy. Um, there's, there's actually a great list of invasive insects and invasive bugs um, on the Department of Agriculture website. Um, they've got a great list. Um, a lot of the beetles so I, I have connections in Kansas. Um, the beetle issue is huge. Okay, there's quite a few invasive beetles and um, they actually use these really horrible smelling traps and will trap hundreds within four to five hours um, in just regular basic yards. Um, so it is, a, it is an issue. Um, I do recommend going on the Department of Agriculture website um, and looking up those invasive insects so that you can at least get a, a good, good eye on them, get a good picture um, and, uh, and know what to look for um, and what to, what to strategically get rid of out of your, out of your space. I know um, down in the valley, um, there are more stink bugs. There are more invasive um, types of bugs, insects um, that I find on my folks' property in the valley that I don't have up here on the hill. Um, so, you know, it is going to be um, location-based in a lot of situations. Um, it may be just that right environment or just the right plants that those insects um, and, and, and uh, bugs really enjoy eating. <laughs> because they, they're going to have their favorites. You know, um, I find a lot of them on my, on my folks, hazelnut trees. Um, and so I'll go in and I'll, I'll put them all in a bucket and I'll drown them. Um, 
instead of spraying. But yeah, it's a, it is an issue. And, and, you know, the Department of Agriculture are now finding um, that Japanese beetle um, and invasive, be you know, they are here. And so really um, I get those photographs um, and really get an eye on them. So you know what to look for. Um, there are invasive worms as well. Um, there is an invasive worm. It has a, a white band on it. Um, and what that worm does um, it looks like a regular earthworm. Um, it will eat the, it eats the root systems of trees. And so they're having a real issue with that in, um, in the forests actually, which is, 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 is fascinating. It's sad all at the same time. Um, so there's lots, lots to take in. I mean, this is just an overview, but there is a lot to take in and we're learning new things all the time, which is really cool about this. Um, so if you have funguses, you know, you've got the powdery mildew. Now powdery mildew is temperature and water um, instigated, I like to say, <laughs> um, you know, we find it a lot in the fall, right? Because we get those cooler nights, things get up more dew on them. Um, a lot of our squashes and, and uh, you know, there's so many different plants that get the powdery mildew and it's such a pain in the tuchus. Um, we have a good picture of the rest right here and black spot. Now roses are notoriously getting black spot. I totally understand. This is not fun stuff, right? Um, and so the copper fungicide is, is, is really effective. Um, neem um, is effective as well. You can get that triple action plus, right? Because then you, if you have the triple action plus um, and, and you're spraying, um, you know, you really don't need to buy any other products um, really because it does take care of all, all, of, all of the things, <laughs> okay? Um, but, um, you know, when you do find any of these things, powdery mildew, um, the rust, um, black spot, um, a lot of, there's several types of root, uh, fruit trees that will get the rust, um, leaf curl, things like that. Um, take, first, take off as much as you can, right? Get rid of it, okay? Because you don't want it spreading. Give it a good coat of, of, of your treatment. Um, it may be that it's just, you know, it's that kind of year with the temperature and the moisture in the air, the humidity, um, things like that. There's certain, certain pe puzzle pieces get put together and it's just that kind of year. Um, like my roses now, they look fantastic, but if we keep getting this cool, wet weather, I am going to start getting worried because my roses are going to start getting some black spot on them. And I'm, I'm going to be really disappointed. Um, or my squash um, that are in the garden. You know, we get that cool, we stay nice and cool. I'm gonna start getting pow powdery mildew and that's gonna make me really sad because uh, I like my squash. So, um, you know, you really have to, it, it's all these different pieces that come together. Some seasons it's worse, some seasons it's better. Um, but if you can catch things early um, and take off all the damaged leaves, um, likelihood is that you're gonna be able to abate it. You're gonna be able to, kind of halts that damage um, and then see some regrowth. Um, depending on the damage, I mean, it may just be a goner, you know, for that season. If it's a perennial, that's okay. If it's a squash, I would just pull it um, if it's too much um, because it does, does spread. So it's, it's tricky stuff. It's really tricky stuff. Um, let's see. Particular to use for spots on Bartlett pears. So um, again, it's the neem, copper, uh, fungicide. Um, those are what, basically what you're gonna wanna use without seeing that leaf. Um, I, I can't give you anything more specific um, really without seeing the leaf itself. Um, if, it's, if it's a black spot or if it's leaf curl, leaf curl is really common. Um, you know, just, you're just gonna wanna treat it. Um, I would do it. If your pears have already set fruit, um, then you're good, right? You can, you can go ahead and, and treat it, um, take off the damaged leaves, the, and then treat the tree. Um, however, um, if they have not set fruit yet, because we've, everything's kind of backed up <laughs> because of the weather, um, then, you know, you're going to want to wait till they, they've been pollinated to do any kind of treatment because you want to get those pollinators in there, right? Um, I'm going to type the chat one more time. There we go. All right. All right. Here is our last question of the day. Which mammals? Okay. So we already know one person said raccoons. <laughs> okay. Which mammals are you having the most trouble with? Right. Deer. Deer, those little stinkers. 
they go for all the good stuff, don't they? Moles, other, what is the other? I'd love it if you could pop that into the chat what the other is. Um, rabbits, yeah, 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 yeah. If there aren't enough, enough coyotes, you're gonna find an uptick in the rabbit activity. Um, the circle of life, circle of life. <laughs> the coyotes keep the rabbit population in check. Um, the deer, yeah. It, it, you know, there's been a lot of construction in the last two or three years and the more construction there is, um, the uh, the more animals will get displaced and they'll go to our yards to find that food. So in a way it's kind of sad. Um, possums, yeah. The feral cats or the domestic cats outside the cats. I know they want to do their business and all of our things and they spray the little stinkers. Yeah, raccoons. Um, I would, I'm curious, what are the raccoons and opossums doing? I mean, I, I, I can imagine what, what I affectionately call trash pandas um, <laughs> are doing to your yard, but the opossums I am curious about because they mostly eat, eat uh, nighttime insects. Um, and they'll sometimes go for garden material and plant material, but mostly they're, they eat a lot of insects. So I'm curious what you're seeing. I'm curious to hear about what you're seeing. Um, rabbits, your dog was such a, yeah, I know, I know. They go so fast. They're like, <laughs> I'm not surprised about your dog. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and end the poll. Only one person for deer. That is interesting um, about the deer. That is very interesting. Yeah, what a other, those, those silly rabbits. Tricks are for kids, right? The old commercial. Um, moles, yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, the, uh, um, if you could share a little bit what, about what you're seeing with the, with the opossums, that would be great for a little bit more specific. Um, a little more, a little more info there would be great. The deer, I'm surprised, um, but they maybe, you know what? Maybe they're finding other vegetation. Maybe with uh, um, cars not going in certain spots anymore, uh, especially if you're out on the north end. You know, maybe, maybe they're finding some other places to be. So we've got, I, I call them the pesky animals. <laughs> uh, so the deer, um, these liquid fence products are actually really effective. You have to apply them two to three times, but um, over time they are very effective. Um, and so um, they, it's a scent. And um, you know I, I, the reason I know that they're effective is that A, I've used them, B, People come in all of the time to go Garden Sphere and they're like, oh, we love this product. Like, so it's, it's, it's actual <laughs> real people coming in going, do you have like, do you have this, you know, do you have any more of this? Can I get the ready? Can I get the concentrate so I can keep using it? You know, do you have the big sprayer? Um, so, so folks are using that product and really liking the results. Um, some, um, some other ways to um, mitigate, you know, of course, deer fencing, you know, get quite tall, right? Um, you can use, um, they make sensor sprayers. Um, so they sense body movement or, and then they'll, they'll give them a squirt, right? And um, that, that does work a little while, but not all the time. Um, so just, just beware that you might squirt yourself on accident if you have it on a timer for certain times a day, <laughs> which, has happened, I've been on walks and all of a sudden I get squirted with water and like, oh no, okay, it's, it's, it's a really strong sensor. <laughs> um, someone's, someone's got a, a water sensor on there. Um, rabbits really love tender, tender greens, deer, tender greens, they love that, um, the nice new growth. I mean, they will just go for the new growth. So um, if you can fence it until the new growth has established itself, um, it, the deer won't necessarily go for um, the old stuff. They want that new tender stuff. Um, and using the deer fencing, um, you know, you're gonna have six foot or higher and then using the liquid fence really is, really does work well. Um, moles, I have, I have a tender spot for moles. Um, so moles, if you don't want them somewhere, again, the liquid fence does work well. Um, they are looking, the reason why I kind of, ha I have this tender spot for moles is because if you have moles, 
you have a rich and really, really wonderful ecosystem in your soil, okay? You, you really have been doing things in your landscape that have made it a really wonderful ecosystem. Okay, so kind of, I guess it's a, it's a, it's a framing change, right? You have moles because you have a really wonderful ecosystem. Okay, so I know that they burrow and I know they can burrow in places we don't want them. We don't want them near the, the foundation of our home, foundations of our sheds. Um, you know, it's really annoying when they pop up in the middle of uh, peas or pop up somewhere where you really don't want them and they just like, this giant hole of soil but think of the soil that they have just now pushed up out of this out of the ground put that soil somewhere else because that is the good stuff okay that is the good soil like that's 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 rich right put that in a pot to plant something in there um use it um of course use the repellents um for where you don't want them right we don't want them in, near our foundations of our homes um we don't necessarily want them near our sprinkler systems if you have them um it can be damaging to them but also damaging to your whole system and it can be very costly um but you are so lucky to have those moles um very 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 lucky um uh, oh you just don't like the opossums coming into your yard it's not that they're doing damage um but they, you don't like them in your yard. I think you are exceptionally lucky to have them in your yard. Um, they're eating a lot of things that would give you a headache uh, later in the day. Um, uh, making sure that you have, uh, you have your porch enclosed on the bottom. Um, they will find a new place to go. Um, the opossums will, um, they'll find a new place to go. Uh, but you do want to put up some chicken wire there, you know, uh, uh, if they're, you know, enjoying some respite underneath your under your porch during the daytime because they are nocturnal animals um keeping cat foods off of the porch any kind of detritus off the porch um area um they will find a new place to go if you have not made those spaces accessible to them but how lucky are you to have opossums um they are a beneficial they do some really great stuff they take care of they can take care of lots of little things that we don't like <laughs> <laughs> um raccoons yeah affectionately called trash pandas um they you know they are looking for food right um and they like protein rich foods um again cat foods um any garbage that's outside um any leftover foods outside they're not going to go for vegetation um but raccoons will absolutely go for any protein rich foods outside um opossums they do eat some vegetation but if like they really like watermelon <laughs> the likelihood that you're growing watermelon on your porch is really small um i, I affectionately feed our opossums here um because they do so much wonderful things in my in my on the property um but the, you know if you don't want them there really keep keep all food products all protein rich food products keep them locked away right um put them in metal containers um put you know make sure you fenced off spaces um until you know for sure that they're not going to be coming back um animals are instinctual and they are are we like to say they're creatures of habit. So if they have found a great space and they've been there for several years, um, it'll take them a while to get into a new habit, right? Um, so you're going to want to, you know, really be mindful about the spaces you keep open. Um, and then, you know, opossums are, are nocturnal. So they are looking for a nice place to sleep at night. Um, yeah, I know, aren't moles cool? You have, I mean, if you've got moles, I, I think you are just like the luckiest people in the world. They, they do so many good things. They aerate, they push up the good stuff. They, they, they are indicating to you that you have this rich, rich soil system and ecosystem under the ground that you just, I'm not, you don't find all over the place. So you're really lucky. Um, so it says, uh, they're super active right now. Well, they're okay. So they're just like the rest of the, the mammal world. Um, they are super, super, super lucky. And so uh, uh, to, to be around in your space, but they are having babies, right? So they're nesting. They burrow more when they're looking for 
food and nesting, just like all of the rest of the animals this time of year, um, than they are the rest of the year. So, so spring and fall are big food times of year. So you're going to find more activity, the hot of the summer and the cold of the winter, very little activity. Okay. Um, unless you've got a lot of food for them. Yeah. And if you've got lots of clay, the moles are like, forget it. This is too hard. <laughs> this is too hard to go through. No, thank you. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I know that uh, Janet and I talked about rats. Now we do have our Norway rat. Um, now rats are absolutely the paths that they take are really ingrained and so you know some folks have a uh, huge trouble with rats in their home going in uh, to their attic well it's been ingrained in them to go these very specific pathways um i always joke just just get a couple barn cats and your rat population will go down um, <laughs> um but yeah they, it can be try to do things that are um not necessarily going to poison them because again we've got you know we're, we're living in an ecosystem and so um there are lots of other animals that do eat the rats um but you know a barn cat's not a bad idea um you know but rats do cause a lot of damage i don't particularly care for them um but try to do things that you can trap them and discard them without using a poison of some sort because you don't want another animal to to die um from that, you know, if the if the rat who's been um, poisoned gets out, right? Um, mole, <laughs> mole. I know, I know. Uh, moles are, yeah. Use that soil somewhere else. Use that soil somewhere else. Uh, and you know, it, you know, it's one of those things. We've, as humans, we've kind of encroached on animals territory here um i am uh so i uh, you know do you have any more questions um i do do a whole tree if you have fruit tree issues um there is a webinar on fruit trees and fruit tree care um that we go through um so that might be for the person who is uh, talking about the pears um that might be a good one to go for um leaf curl is really common on this side of the mountains um with our our cherries or nectarines um peaches, things like that. Um, so, you know, leaf curls a, is, is a big deal, um, especially on this side of the mountains. Um, but there's lots of other uh, webinars available there. So I have good information. Um, I'd love it. I'm putting those. The, I, yeah, lots, yes, of those lots of resources, lots of resources. Um, the resources I just went on while you were talking and looked, and most of them don't have a tab for weeds or pests. But if you search on that, it will most of them will bring you up with something. Yeah. Um, uh, Department of, the the Dep Washington Department of Agriculture um, really has some great resources on in super invasive hog hogweed. Wear gloves, you will get a, a burn on your skin. There are some very, very invasive and um, damaging to your physical body um, without protection. Um, please make sure to go on the Department of Agriculture's um, website uh and, and you can look up those they have wonderful pictures their hogweed actually is really pretty <laughs> it's pretty and dangerous um but it, it will give you it it will do damage to your skin um and so you to to be aware of some of those is uh oof, yeah it's really important um a high grown lawn oh were you a a no mo may <laughs> I, I did no mow May, so I, I totally understand. I'm, I'm dealing with that right now. Um, uh, you know, if you got a lawnmower, put it on its highest setting, um, and then you're gonna have to strategically drop it um, as you go. Um, riding lawnmower should kick it all the way off. Um, you can go over with a, um, uh, you can use a, a, a weed whacker, a string trimmer, right? Uh, I, I use a string trimmer, and then I'll go over on my highest setting on my lawnmower. And then I have, I just kind of strategically drop it, you know, given the energy level I have. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, my, my front is absolutely a no mo me front it is, it is, it's, it's pretty good. Um, but I've got, I've got all kinds of weird stuff in there too. So I'm going to have to like use hand shears in some spaces because <laughs> I know I've got plants there. 
Um, but yeah, I would, I just strategically go over it with a string trimmer real quick and then, you know, get that mower or your, whatever you're using to cut your lawn, um, get in the highest setting. And then just, you're going to have to do several mows, probably three or four and kind of drop it down to the height you want. Um, I always leave it I leave my, I have, I got to tell you, I've got a very small grass space. Um, most of it is, is plant matter. Um, and so, uh, the, but the grass space I do have, um, is I, I keep it at about three to four inches. Um, and it is mixed in with white clover. So I, I just kind of let the grass grow to the height of the clover and just do that. Um, I've been growing clover out there for a while and I've got a, about 16 yards of, of horse manure from a buddy uh in my front yard so i i you know it's it's pretty wild out there um but good for you for doing no mow may that's <laughs> that's awesome those pollinating insects really uh really benefit from that so um oh you're not able to copy those web links um i know that janda um you know janda can it will send out you you know you janda you're going to send out uh you can send out an email with those links too right no, I haven't been doing that uh, for quite some time because okay. it's just well, taking a lot of extra time. So typically we are putting those in the, the web, um, the webinars, but I can. Yeah, because we've somebody saying that they're, those, it's not, a, it's not letting them copy the web link. So, um, but maybe they can, sure. I'm going to. Okay, I I'm can send them it. if it's not letting you copy it. If you, if you do. Um, how did I do that before? I did a control all, I think. No. Nope. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. It, that's okay, it's not out. letting me copy it either. Nope. Okay, I'll check the settings on that. But yes, I will go ahead and Changing permissions. put be, these yeah. in a more readable format and I will email those out to everybody on. I won't email them to people that registered and aren't here. Um, but those of you who are on the webinar, I will email those to you. Yeah. Well, you. Sorry about that. I'll go in and I couldn't do this. I had to log into a different um, uh, webinar this week and I couldn't copy um, on that Amanda. one either. So, yeah. So um, I did a copy. I literally put, you know how you can highlight and copy it. I did a control copy and then I just pasted it into the, into the, my, um, my bar. So that, that does work. Clicking, clicking on it does not work, but I did just highlight it and, and click it. So if there's something specific in there, you can highlight it and then um, plug it into your web browser. That will work too. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, really, if you have any more questions or anything you can give, um, um, shoot Janda an email, come by Garden Sphere. Um, you know, we've, we're there to help you. We want you to be successful. So Thank you so much for joining us today. And I did put in the, the chat, I put the link for registering for more webinars. Yes. I have two that I'm trying to get scheduled for July. We had two that were canceled. Um, so at the moment, there's nothing scheduled for July. Hal Ming is supposed to be doing one on pickles in August. And I'm, I'm trying to get him for a midweek one um, in July for a couple of them. But that hasn't panned out yet. So um, still trying to get some more added, but um, if you are in the area, come by the Enviro House and we can um, have some handouts and help you there too. Yeah, so. and there's tons of stuff on the webinars and the YouTube, you know, right. how to's, there's so much stuff that yeah. the Enviro House has online with the city. Yeah, and that, so. that link is in there, um, youtube.com slash um city of tacoma slash uh what is it playlist and if you put yeah. the playlist in it'll bring up everything that the city has as different playlists and then you just search for enviro house web workshops or enviro house how to and jenny yeah. has done a lot of those so um, good info. okay good info. all right so thank you all and i will um i'll do that as soon as i'm off here and um, send those to you today. All right. Thank you so much. Have Thanks a great day. Everyone. Okay. Have a good weekend all. Bye. Thanks, Jenny. You're welcome.